This video is going to show you a solo flawless prophecy dungeon on a titan. For those who just want to see that, then skip to the timestamps you have available to you. Over that, I can show you uh, the weapons and the builds I used. If you're a warlock man and you want to see uh, a solo flawless from this season, I've already done it, so you can just check that video out. For hunter mains, I haven't done a hunter solo yet. I will do later on throughout the season. I've done it in previous seasons, but just not this season. But anyways, this is the titan run. So for builds, what did we choose? We chose... Code of the Protector Sentinel top tree with Vod Wild Grenade, Tower and Barricade. And we paired that with the Exotic Boots Doom Marches. Doom Marches give you faster sprinting and it chains melee damage. That's uncharged or charged melee damage. This exotic is perfect for silence. You'll see uh, the gameplay in the run itself with this. Weapon wise, we use the Exotic Ground Launcher with a Horde, the Coordinate Solar Fusion Rifle, and a. <coughs> Stasis Rage Regret Linear Fusion. All weapons are taken spec on. If you don't have taken spec, then probably put a boss or a major spec in these. You know, you can pick and choose what you really want to do with that. Um, doesn't really matter either way. Armor mods, we used a protective light build with elemental wells. So we've got protective light, which is void on the helmet. Melee well maker, so when we um, get a powered melee kill, so that's a charge melee, not uncharged, charged. You get an elemental well, but when you pick up an elemental well, if you put elemental charge on, you get charge of light via picking up a elemental well, thus giving you protective light on melee kills, which lends itself to the build, right? So works out really good. Other perks that we had on particle deconstruction, bomber on the class piece, scavengers on the boots to match our weapons, soul damage resistance, concussive damper on the chest plate. Soul damage resistance is the best resistance. That you can run for this dungeon so i would recommend that you do it uh, there's an argument made to use arc maybe but other than that solo is the the best one gray launcher loaded on the gauntlets ammo finders on the helmet that's build one we use another build that's very similar to this just a variation on it so at one of the encounters we switch off doing matches and we take off simpsons which gives us a buff to melee damage huge buff and for super damage um, so we end up using that. It's very similar. We, we keep the same mods. The only thing that I do change when I get to the final boss is Because it's not equipment locked you can change mods. So um, I take protective light off and I put high energy fire on which is a 20% damage buff um, Which I end up doing but that was it what I ended up going with for the Titan for the setups Okay, so with the run so uh, the reason why I went for the Titan run today is um, that seems to be the most requested out of, you know, soloing for all three because um, by most accounts it may be the hardest for people and I could agree with that to some extent. The Warlock's probably the uh, best class to do this on and then maybe Hunter second or you could even say Hunter first because of the invisibility and stuff like that. Now this first section, this opening encounter, this is teaching the mechanics. Now I'm not going to do the cheese where you uh, jump up the tunnel. I'm not against you doing that either to be honest. If you want to do that, grab a sword or use the uh, Stasis Exotic Grey Launcher, you can do it that way. And make like um, like a stairwell up there with the Exotic Grey Launcher, you can do that. Or with a sword. Or you can just do it like this regular. I'm just doing it regular, just, just for the sake of it. Because I don't want to be putting a sword on and then switch to another weapon. So I was just doing it normal. Right, so I'm not going to go through the basics so much. This is more, the, when any time I do these dungeons, it's aimed at somebody who already knows the deal with the dungeon. They know the mechanic, but they want to know extra tips on positioning, builds, weapons, what should I do at this point, what's the best way, the most efficient way to do damage, all that stuff. That's what this video is aimed at. It's not about you stand in the dark, you get three more T, you get three more there. I mean, there'll be tips on position on how to get, you know, the best out of the nights, for sure, but... Generally, as I said, I'm not going to go through each mechanic. The mechanic's pretty simple anyways. It's just dark and light. The screen will show you there'll be a little white um, hue, if you like, at the bottom of the screen, or, or dark, to tell you if you're in dark or light. I will say one thing about it, though. If you can't tell between dark and light because you are you have the screen lighting bug, then you need to open your inventory for five seconds, something like that, two or three seconds, and then... Um, close the menu and it fixes the bug because it is still bugged and that is a big deal because um, not knowing exactly where dark and light is at times 
can be annoying if everything's bright. Okay. <clears throat> so just open your inventory, go to cover somewhere, whatever encounter you're on, go to cover and then open your inventory and that'll fix it. Okay, so this is with the first encounter, the actual first encounter if you like. Let this boss despawn as well. He gets in the way. If you go up this uh, hill too quick, the Echo Kel will actually stand. He won't melee you or anything, but he'll stand in the arena in your way. He gets in the way. Okay, so um, let him despawn. Just, just let the boss despawn, and that way he's not in your way. So as we start the fight, you want to focus an emphasis on the um, sounds. Okay, uh, do try and spawn kill the sounds with River Horde and things like that. Um, mainly use your fusion rifle. I mean, you can use, you can. It just depends on the on the situation. Sometimes it's really good to do a River Horde on a night, right? And then go into cover. Say you need light or dark, you can. You can wither hard them anywhere you want, but as long as you stand in the right um, lighting, when that knight dies, as wither hard kills him, because one wither hard shot will kill a knight, you'll then get the uh, most that you want, which makes wither hard an ideal weapon. Anarchy was the same in this, um, just the same as what wither hard is, right? In terms of you could stick a knight, run away, and you get your most. You, you can't ask for any more. So we're just working on white. You can double dunk. Um, so you see you've got a, a white aura and a dark aura well you can um, double dunk them which I believe I have successfully done that and I've just done it like I said 30 seconds ago so if you didn't see it replay it but essentially you need to be really high and be in between the two dunks to obtain a double dunk okay yeah it's kind of it is a cheese but it's actually difficult to pull off and it can wipe you uh, if you have knights chasing you while you're dunking you need to be planning all the time. It looks like I'm not planning, but I am planning every move that we're doing. This is where the um, the doom matches come in. Make sure you're always sprinting. You have linear accu. Um, it is proc'd. When you have that proc, that means you've got your static charge, right? And you can melee a knight, and that will um, if the scions near a knight, melee a knight if, if the knight's in the way, because all that damage will surround uh, towards the scions. And it'll take care of sounds and things. So it's it's sometimes beneficial just to do that. But always keep an eye on your health. Obviously with Charge of Light, Protective Light. Which um, makes this build even better. It would be a little bit harder without it. Um, but it would still be possible, of course. Always. Um, we're just getting our last light moment, I believe. And then we're going to do it on a top dunk. It's so important you do that for the strategy. Then come to the corner of one of these uh, top platforms. Very corner and then bubble. That will ensure that you can stand on the platform and have a bubble. Right, now we can do some DBS. Now don't be counting on a one phase. You're not going to solo one phase with this weapon set up despite how good it is. Um, you can solo one phase with a sword. It's pretty difficult on a Titan because a Titan bubble does not override immunity. These goblins make the boss immune, you just saw there. On a Well of Radiance, Well of Radiance overrides immunity, which means, you know, Warlock's so good. But um, on Titan, it's just not as good for this fight, so you'll see. So you're going to be planning on a two-phase, that's fine. right? So now I'm just starting to slow down damage, I'm not too fussed. Let's get rid of the goblins, because they can wipe you as well. You're going to have goblins with knight spawn on top. It's a lot to deal with. So when you've finished the damage phase, I mean, I've done good enough damage. We'll get him on the second phase. Um, we need to prioritize those goblins. Use... Um, Use your Weaver Horde, go into cover, things like that. Use your Tower and Barricades for defensive uh, situations. That's what makes the Tower and Barricades so good. It defends against the Knights. Now, the Knights aggro. Uh, they go through phases where if you run past them, they will run you down. Especially if you're weak, they will chase you down. You just need to keep map rotation. The Doom matches will help you a little bit with that, get you escaping from Knights, because you have the increased sprint speed. I've done this uh, dungeon loads of times on all classes, and... This first time I've chose to use do matches, and I found when you're escaping on a Titan, do matches are actually decent to escape from knights because I know it's not a big deal in terms of you know the speed that you gain, but that every little bit helps when you, especially when you're doing solo stuff. Anytime uh, it's a sound phase, you get sound phases obviously after every time you dunk. 
it used to be different it used to be two sound waves and that was it but then they change it for every dunk you do that's why if you do get a dull dunk it's beneficial to you because you've just sorted two dunks out and then only got one phase sounds so that's really beneficial but always be keeping an eye on your health be map rotation you see the knights has chased me like they can chase um, you'll also get different um, dunks on the second phase you can see it's um, I'm having a dunk on the outside of what dark and light to do stuff like that but always prioritize sounds every phase if you need to wipe a knight but you're not getting more off him just because the knights are really hurting you on the sound phase kill a knight the worst thing that can happen is the knight dies you lose the moats that's fine you get knights spawning in all the time that's the mechanic so if you want to wipe knights just to get them off your back do it it's very it, 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 i would say definitely do it, it if, if that's a, a problem to you when you're on the sound phase so just getting a dark dunk here obviously it's going to be um this last phase if you need to use your bubble as a panic button use it as well uh, that's it that's always an option on this class that's another reason why i went it because there are moments where you get you will get really hit hard you might have lost your protective light like right now i haven't got it i haven't got protective light um so you can always use a bubble because on the second phase of damage you don't need the bubble to finish off dbs because he's only like what 25 percent hp left so this fight's pretty much done i just need to get the last dunk I believe we need light left uh, last we also have a different platform see this is very small detail but it's so important some of the platforms are bigger than others now on the first phase I know the platforms are big enough to do a bubble up there but on your second phase you might not get the same platform and some of the platforms are too small to put a bubble up and do damage so if you get a small platform <coughs> you're gonna have to bubble on the floor but on the second phase it's not a problem just as long as you optimize first phase and leave the top dunk till last because there's two dunks on the floor two dunks on a platform leave <coughs> the last dunk till last so then you can bubble up there and the boss isn't going to come and melee you and things like that um, but if he does there is a way around it you'll see on this second phase actually uh, you just actually rotate around him because all the boss will do is just try to aggro you you can just bubble like you'll see right here so he comes right in the bubble, but just rotate around, because obviously he's immune on his shield. Just keep rotating around him using your linear, uh, your standard fusion. And he's literally, he's literally dead at that point. You can see the increased chance of heavy drops working. So because I'm using double special, I get an increased chance of getting heavy bricks. So, and also an increased chance on special, because there's no, it, it's just more consistent for, for ammo for that uh, sense. But the ammo finders and the scavengers help with that to ensure that you've got enough ammo to do what you need to do. So now we're switching off the Doom Archers. We'll put on uh, Symphysep. So I'm going to use it for this part. Um, and I'm going to use it for the cube room. I just feel as though it's a little bit better for the cube room than what Doom Archers is. And it's one reason. Because there's no Scions. The Doom Archers is an amazing build for Scions. But when there's no Scions, I prefer Symphysep. It's just, it is actually my favourite Titan exotic in the game, so I'm a little bit biased that way, but I'll, I'll use the Symphys. I could have used Symphys for the full run, but I wanted to uh, do this, uh, to do a match just to see how it performed. It performed really well. So we're on the Blights in the desert section. <clears throat> it's important to know what you're up against, right? So one set of Blights has Knights, one set of Blights has Goblins, one set of Knights has, Cent uh, one set of Blights has Centurions. The Centurion phase is the most difficult because they, they spawn their orbs. You can stand on top of the Blight and do damage. I actually forgot how much damage Simpseps does to the Blights, which I end up doing it on the second and third Blight wave. Um, but you can essentially like two-shot a Blight with your melee, with two melees, which that's what I should have done. The Fusion's a three-shot. Your linear is not very good on the Blight, but we just left that on. I could have swapped to a Sword or whatever. Um, but you know, it doesn't matter in the end. Just be careful on the on the blight section because it's easy to die. This is the easiest encounter of the whole thing. Just take out the snipers. If you're not confident, take out the snipers. You've got a linear on. Just use that. 
It's only three snipers each phase, so just um, as soon as you approach, the snipers spawn in. Just take out all three snipers and then be on your way about getting the blades. <coughs> it's not the quickest way of doing it, but it, it's safer because they can wipe you between blades. You, you wipe a blade out and then you go to the next one, you could get double sniped. You know, things like that can happen. And if the centurions hit you with an orb, all that combination of all three things hitting you could wipe you. So there's a chance of it, there's risk. So always evaluate what risks involved. Well, there's, it's quite risky if you live in snipers up, so don't do it. You're on a solar flawless. So you're not on a team run, you're not farming weapons, you're on a solar flawless. So take the precautions if you're not confident with it. We're on the centurion phase, as I said, they can be dangerous, but they didn't push me so much. One sniper still alive, take him, and then we'll go for the orb. The orb will show you which way to go. I didn't see where the orb was there, because there's a lot of ads chasing me. But generally I will look, and the actual white orb will um, veer off to the left, right, behind you, forward, to tell you where, where the next blight encounter is. It will also show you where the exit is. And it just saves on time of you looking around, because this is a good, like a really big map. Um, so it just saves on time. So he will end up using a melee, start using the melees, as you can see it's doing insane because we've got biotic enhancements with all the adds surrounding us, um, we're getting that uh, damage buff. So this is the best way of doing it, just do it like this, stand on top of the blight, melee, and then move on. That's the final blight. So that's the... Um, Wasteland area you're doing, as I said, you're probably not watching it for this part anyways, it's simply enough to take, and then obviously the next encounter we've got is the cube room. So for the cube room, I suggest that you put on solar damage resistance, so just keep with the solar, and then put on a sniper resistance. Take off the concussive dampener and use a sniper resistance, it will help out against taking snipers. Uh, and you, you're dealing with them a lot. So I would recommend doing that. I didn't swap right away because I forgot, but I do end up swapping to it. So make sure you're doing that now before you start the encounter. Swap to sniper resistance. If you want to continue on with the Doom Archer build, then you could still make it work for this. But I just think as though, especially with snipers, it's better just to sort of <coughs> one shot an ad rather than two shot. Because Doom Marches, there's pros and cons to both. Doom, watch, Doom Marches has better ad clear but less melee damage, so you don't one-shot adds. Symphoseps will just one-shot an ad, okay? So there's pros and cons to both, and I feel as though, because there's no silence in this room, Symphoseps was just a bit better, because if you do, if you are super weak, get double sniped, if you, if you one-shot an ad, you get your health regen and you're saved. So look up top always first. This is the order you do the room. You look up for the orb. You look at what you need. Look at what you need and then you take out acolytes. Don't take snipers first. On a team run, you'd have somebody take out the snipers while somebody deals with adds and then you team shoot knights. On solo, you don't do it like that. You look up first, find your orb, find what you need uh, to get. So I need light right now. Take the adds, take the snipers with your linear, right? So that's what the, li the purpose of the linear in this one is to just deal with the, the um, the snipers and then melt your two knights mainly with either wither horde or the solar fusion and just i would just try to save a little bit of linear because it's just super nice having linear ammo just to one shot the snipers it just in increases the speed and efficiency of doing these rooms the quicker you do the room the safer it is i don't mean to the point where you know you're taking snipers first and you're doing it things out of order but just you know going and spawn killing ads with wither horde and things and grenades um, and always trying to get your protective light. If you lose protective light, then get that back off a melee kill and pick up your well. Any, um, the eyes that acolytes spawn kill those. They don't despawn. They used to just despawn when the acolyte would be killed, but the acolyte seems to stay alive. Uh, not the acolyte, but the, um, the eyes that they spawn, and they do a bit of damage to you, so make sure you take them out. See, the timing on this is perfect for me because when, by the time you've melted one knight, um, you can melt the second one and just as you've melted the second one, the first and second, because for every knight that you, you take, another sniper spawns above you, you can see. 
right? So if you melt your knights quick, by the time you've picked up your moats, the sniper's only just about start to get aggroed on you. That's where the sniper resistance comes in. Because there's no ads, you don't need to worry about that, but you need to um, use good movement to avoid the snipers. Swing with the moat, um, that's a good way of avoiding them. Avoid their enemy fire. <clears throat> but as I said, the sniper resistance will help out massively there. I got sniped two or three times, tanked a lot of damage. Same again, protective light procs. I wasn't sure where the sniper was, to be honest, he's in an awkward place. Two snipers. And go for our knights. There was one room where I got it wrong. This could be the room, I'm not sure. There was one room where I actually got the wrong mode. And if that happens, that you, you're going to get penalised because... The Acolytes are on an independent uh, spawn timer, so they're independent. The Knights and the, the Snipers, they spawn each other. You kill a Knight, you get a Sniper. You kill a Sniper, you get a Knight. But the Acolytes are on a, on a timer, right? They're on, call it 30, 40 seconds, and then another wave spawns in. There's infinite adds, so you can farm up ammo each room. So say you are low on ammo, which could be, a, you could be low on ammo, because it is double special heavy. Uh, if you are, just stay on that room don't go up the teleport just keep killing the acolytes you will get special bricks okay um and you can just keep farming that way if you want to farm up supers you can do that the super is not that useful i'll be honest bubble for this it's more the neutral gameplay of it right you know one shot nards getting melee straight away kind of like devour but for melee for a titan which is why warlock devours so good but this, this is what i believe to be <clears throat> the best setup for prophecy Okay, there's other setups you could you could have went one eye mask. One eye mask is what I first went with when the dungeon first came out. I done my first soul force on a tank with one eye mask. One eye mask worked out decent, but if it's nowhere near as good as what I'm using now, okay. Um, there's other setups that you could use. You could use Crest of Alpha Lupi. That was one I used with the the chest plate and use a resilience build. You could do that. This is where I got my moats wrong. So you can see I got my moats wrong. I went for dark. Uh, the wrong, uh, sorry I went for light and it was meant to be dark. So this is where we get another spawn of acolytes so I end up playing a little bit more aggressive here just to sort of catch back up. We get super um, low so I use a panic bubble. So see how one problem has went to another one, it's a domino effect. And that's what I'm saying, if you're not efficient in these rooms that's where you get your wipes. It's not, it's not really the difficult of it, it's just, oh, I, I got the wrong moats, you know, um, which is easy done, or oh, snipers caught me off guard. That's where you'll get your wipes. But as I said, you can use your bubble there as a panic. You don't really need the, you don't need the Roman super for anything, so your bubble's there as a panic button, that's all it is. Because obviously this is solar flawless, it's for the, you know, for you to get the emblem and what have you. Obviously as well to do, to get your weapons. So there's a lot of weapons that are good to obtain from the dungeon. The kinetic art rifle, that's a 600 RPM. That has osmosis on it, it's got some frenzy rolls. It's a really good art rifle. Then you've got the sidearm, that's not very useful to be honest. Uh, there is the judgment hand cannon, that has some really good rolls. It's got explosive payload on it, it's got osmosis to get. The Pulse Rifle, Dark as before, is amazing for PvP, which I've got one. Um, there's also some good rolls for PvE for it. So there's a lot of reasons. The Shotgun's amazing for PvP with Elemental Capacitor. Not so good in PvE, it's alright. There's better Shotguns. Slug Shotguns are better than uh, what that is. But it's, you know, there's so many good weapons, so many good rolls you can get. So it's still worth farming the prophecies every week. If you've got nothing else to do, this is a good thing to do. Not only that, armor as well. You get high stat armor. I believe on a run before this, I got a 64 stat on a team run. I got a 64 stat gauntlets with 28 recov, right, and 20 discipline. That that insane. You can get some insane stat rolls. You just need to make sure you run recovery armor on your ghost, and you're going to be getting all the rolls that you could ever want. Obviously, optimize recovery on any class. Every class, the primary start is recovery. You always go for that. Then you go for your secondary start. I know there's triple stab builds, you know, like um, 
all that stuff but generally for the most part you go for one stat and then your secondary stat might be discipline or intellect just depends on your playstyle but other than that we're just dunking there's not more room there's not that many rooms left now so on the far room as you know you'll get centurions which they they can be melted with the uh, fusion worked out decently so having no primary so just having the double special because of how weaver horde works its ammo goes so far it's not a burst damage weapon it's a damage over time weapon okay it's this weaver horde actually got made when prophecy did so i would say when they were making weaver horde they kind of made it for this dungeon because if you think about it it's taken themed the dungeon's taken themed it's it's um around light and dark it's the perfect weapon for it you you um body shot a knight with with a hod then you go into the dark or you, in the light wherever you need to be and you can easily kill the knights okay so um, it's as i said it's it's got to be the best weapon for this i would say for your exotic choice 1000 voices is good but it lacks ammo on team runs you can use your 1k voices but on the solo you want i would recommend the with a hod so now we'll switch our build back to doing matches. We're still using everything the same, subtractive light, well maker, elemental charge, all that stuff. You know, the same deal. We've returned back to the desert, um, and you just follow the boss. It's the same exit this time. I'm sure you'll know that. And then it'll be the um, last jumping part, which is like the uh, sparrow section. You can wipe on there, but... Um, you shouldn't really be, you know, if you want to go for Soul Flawless, you shouldn't be dying on there. And if it is, it's because you're rushing it or you're falling off the map or a whole host of things can happen. Um, there's different routes you can take, right? So you, I'll show you the safe route. Obviously, you can Sparrow Fly over there. So if you're confident doing Sparrow Fly, then you can do that. But um, for the most part, you're not going to be doing that in a run, okay? Um, only speed runners. If you speed run it, then you'll do that. But anyways, so you just want to sparrow all the way down here. Uh, there'll be snipers spawning. Be careful of those. For the most part, they're not very accurate and they won't hit your sparrow. But if they do blow up your sparrow, that can knock you off the map or nearly wipe you. So you've got to be careful um, about that. For the most part, just keep going. Don't slow down so much. And they, they as I said, they won't hit you. Also, you will have had sniper resistance on. Make sure you take <coughs> sniper resistance off and put concussive dampener back on. So, the solar damage resistance, the reason why that's the best solar resistance for this dungeon is knights. They do a huge amount of damage um, to you when you stand in the flames. Uh, even if you jump over the flames, you still take sort of damage to it. So, you're always going to be slightly getting hit by the knights, no matter how good your movement is. So having the solar resistance on, especially when they really aggro on you, there's a couple of times on, on the first boss you saw knights are chasing me, I'm really weak, and the solar resistance just helping out. The concussive dampener will help out against their air, their um, their over attack that they do. It does like an area of effect damage, the the ranged attack they do, not the solar flame. So the concussive dampener helps against that. Um, the scions, you've got nothing resistance wise for that you could have went arc resistance but i feel as though the sounds get wiped easy okay they just do matches sort the, the uh, sounds out so they're not a problem it's the knights that are because you have to leave knights up like you may need to leave one knight up while you're melting another knight and the other knight that you're not shooting at will be doing damage to you so soul resistance is as i say the, be the, the best way to go this area is the um the way where you can just jump all the way across so i'm taking a it's a shortcut but it's it's um it's a shortcut it's faster for this but when you when you start jumping over this next section it's slower so you actually quicker just sparrowing all the way around to my left but generally i just jump down here if you want the chest though it's in that final um room that's in front of me but i already got the chest on a previous run so i just jumped down this way and then you come to the elevator. Now the elevator, it's kind of weird. It just sometimes it just doesn't lift you. Um, generally, the if you just jump into the elevator, it takes you. But I've done that here. Uh, it still didn't really do that. So 
I was prepared for that so I melted the um, phalanx just in case the phalanx sort of tries to boob us off the map or anything. And then we just uh, eventually we get pointed. This goblin got pointed with us, take him out, why not? And then now we're on to the final boss. So w our build sorted, you know, we don't need to change anything apart from protective light. What we're going to do is we're going to have protective light on and off. We're going to switch it on and off when we want. We're going to knock high energy fire on and off. I'll show you how to do that. It's pretty simple. Because then we can get a 20% damage buff. Just know that weapons of light, your bubble is 35%. Char uh, charge of light is 20% high energy fire. So weapons of light is more. But I'll get into that because they're two buffs and they don't stack. But that's there's a strap behind it. So we looked at what we got. We've got two light, I believe. I think it's two light in the dark. Uh, so we're going to melt as quickly as we can here. One night and then just be sprinting around as much as you can to be getting those scions because they will duplicate if you leave them. Okay. Uh, but if you saw, I was multitasking, so I wither hoarded a night and then took care of the scions. And then by the time the sound's dead, the night's dead. So then I can get a dunk, and then you can get your first dunk, and that's critical. The quicker you get your first dunk, you just make the room so much easier, because obviously the room's split into three ways. When you dunk one side, uh, a copy of Keleko disappears, which means that copy can't hit you, which means you've got a base of operations to be safe. Okay. Now we take out these two knights. I was playing a little aggressive there. I didn't have to play as aggressive as that. I was trying to get it. I was trying to get two dunks before we get away with scions. So the scions are infinite, just like the acolytes in the cube room. They are infinite. They just keep spawning up and up and up, over and over. They're an independent spawn. The timing on it, I'm not 100%. I didn't time. It. I wish I had. It, it's probably going to be like a minute or something like that. Every minute they spawn up. See how we're getting our overshields? This is where the build comes in with uh, Rallying Force on Sentinel. You're getting melee on, you're getting health regen on uncharged melee kills. It's insane. Whenever you're at power on an activity, I know it's 1100 this dungeon, but it caps you out at 1100, right? So you actually capped at that power. But if, you, if you're not doing Grandmaster stuff, then um, the Simpsons Top Tree Sentinel is one of the best setups in the game, like hands down. You could use blinding grenades, I could have used that on this setup somewhere. Instead of Wither Horde, I could have optimized for like a a blinding grenade with uh, the solar fusion and then a linear. I could have done it like that. If I wanted to, I could have used Sleeper instead of the Wither Horde. But I wouldn't recommend Sleeper over a good well rolled legendary because Sleeper just lacks in ammo. It, they've done good with the buff, don't get me wrong. They've done good with the buff. But it's still, it's suffering from ammo. It, it, it should have 20. In my opinion, if a Rage Regret can have 20, 21 ammo, then a Sleeper Simulant should have 20. It shouldn't be nerfed by it. And if they say that the answer to that is because of Gambit, then no, that shouldn't be an answer. That's just one activity. So, sleep is good. It's turned out really good this season, but it's not as good as your Tarantulas, a God Roll Freddy Needle, or a Rage Regret because of ammo so now we're changing we're taking off charge with light uh, protective light now you'll hear the ping and you'll see that my gun will glow so you see that the guns glowing that means charge of light um, high energy fire has propped so now we're going to get a 20% damage buff for DPS make sure you're full on ammo like especially like um, your fusion we'll start off with a nade for DPS one body shot with river horde and then some fusion this all has to be timed, then you'll re a hard up, jump to the next platform. There's five platforms of DPS, so we're on plate one now, that's referring to the boss. Get a melee kill on the snipers, you need to spawn kill them with your melee. Don't kill them with weapons, because you will lose your 20% damage buff. So kill them with your melee, uh, do matches will help out with that. And then a hard, always a hard before you leave a plate, that's plate two. Five plates in total. Spawn kill the next two snipers. There's eight snipers in total. Then we'll do another wither hard. Maybe you could do more damage than what I did here. But I done a little bit and then ran off. This whole DPS that the way I do it is 
just play ahead of the game because if you play behind you're going to get the dark entropy debuff you're going to get snipers you know there's eight snipers it's quite a lot we get a good river hard shot there we do a bubble this is now plate four so as i said there's five plates so essentially plate one and two is mainly river hard a couple of fusion rifle shots plate three we sacrifice we don't do a lot of damage on plate three just a river hard right and then plate four and five is your big damage plates this is where you're doing most of your damage. Now this damage isn't the best, but I do get him below half. The reason why I say it wasn't the best, I mean it's pretty good, but the reason why is because my bubble placement. I had my bubble so close to the boss, it was just wasn't the best, and I couldn't re um I was meant to re-up on my weapons of light, because when you go in and out of a bubble, it refreshes weapons of light. So I lost weapons of light at the end. But to explain that. 20% damage buff from high energy fire worked for all of the fight apart from when the bubble went up. When the bubble went up, the bubble overrides 20% and it goes to 35. That's it. So the, the charge of light is working for everything and then when you bubble you get an extra 15. So they don't stack, so it wouldn't be 55, it's just 35. So I wouldn't recommend Thunder Crash Super on this boss because he can stomp you. you. You super him, he stomps you. So, yeah, you get a good chunk of boss damage, but then you stomp you off the map. Then you've just lost all your damage. You have a, a roughly 1 minute and 40 seconds to DPS the boss. That's a lot of time. So it's not a DPS fight. It's more of a damage over the d damage over time type thing. That's what makes Riverhard so good. Because you're doing DPS with Riverhard while you're jumping between plates to plate. This is, this is um, room number 2. The... Um, for the next phase, which we looked at what we needed, I believe we need um, dark, I think it's two dark, one light, but take a quick glance, while you jump, while you get potted into another room, take a quick glance at what you need, because it could be free light, it could be free dark, okay, obviously melt, melt the sounds, uh, and you know, don't be fine to use heavy on the uh, ogres, every time you get one of those, use your barricade as well, and then we can go for the next two nights. I believe we're going for a light here, which this room's really good. It's well lit. It's it's actually really good. I like this room. There's some rooms worse than others. There's a room called Hell Room, or we used to call it that, because the Scion um, spawn rate is quicker than other the other rooms. I don't know why, um, but that was a thing. I didn't even get that room, but I have done commentary on that run when when I've had that particular room. I've done a lot of Soul Force uh, videos on Prophecy, so but that's just how this run turned out, and getting this room, which is pretty decent. If you need light as well, there's a lot of room on top, on that building in top, you can stand on, on the top pillars and that's all classed as light. But right now we need dark. Protective light's going in, we're, we're, we're playing a bit more aggressive, but that's we can, we can afford to do it. We kill a knight incorrectly, I'm not sure why, I must have been I must have been jumping up high, too high. As the knight got uh, taken out by Weaverhard. That's fine, we'll always get another chance at a knight. Ran out of uh, standard fusion, so I use heavy. The spawn of Scions is right on top of me, so I've got to be really careful. This is where doing matches comes in really handy. Just in terms of getting away from ads. We are going to deal with that phase of Scions. Definitely. Because we want ammo. We want as much ammo. Because this is going to be a two phase. I'm setting the whole thing up for a two phase. I don't want a three phase. It, just because if, if we can optimise a two phase. Which I should be able to do. Especially with charge of light. I'm getting 20% damage buff for all my damage. People have done it without charge of light. Still two phase. It. So this is a safe two phase. As long as you do emulate what I'm doing then it's not so it's not so tough to get a solo two phase on it but it's ammo wise first phase most likely you're in a good ammo position second phase of the fight maybe not this is where the extra spawns of scions come in we're going to switch to uh, high uh, high fire again which is our helmet for this in this case your gun will glow that's how you know you got it that's how you can turn um, charge of light on and off and then we're going to kill some of these scions to hope to get a special brig. The main part of the damage comes from our fusion. 
the linear fusion get, does a lot of damage uh, don't get me wrong um, but the fusion's really good for getting max stacks of particle deconstruction because each bolt of the fusion rifle is counted as a stack so you can get five stacks from one shot i'm sure we know this by now um, but what, what the strat is is you can do one fusion rifle shot then switch to your linear and you get max stacks on your linear as well for damage the linear is really good at times especially the way i do it when you skip plate three and you go right to the back of the room you you with a hard shot might miss and things like that so you can do linear damage to do on this phase but it's important as i say you do the damage and you you manage the snipers as i did you, you it's a very low chance of you failing because it's all calculated so when he does his teleport when he does his uh, move to teleport you that's all avoided because you're running he can't hit you unless you run into it but uh, i know generally when he'll do that each player he'll do the same thing so he'll hit you a couple of times uh with his range attack and then he'll do his teleport move when he does his teleport move that's when snipers spawning especially on plate one so we're good enough on ammo i suppose i went we'll get a double stack up with a horde if you can do that one at his feet one at the body you do more damage do some linear uh, damage he's done his part move that is your cue to move get off plate one plate one's done kill the two snipers melee them don't kill them with your guns do a weaver hard shot behind you i've got a stick that's good so you're still doing damage we're still doing damage to the boss but we're running keep them mobile and killing the ads as well then another weaver hard shot a grenade if you want uh then we can come for the next spawn kill makes it so easy this makes it a breeze kill the next two snipers and then a weaver hard some more damage from your linear or your fusion whatever you want one or two shots and then the timing works out because as you get to the back of the room the two snipers can be spawn killed you sacrifice damage for plate three right but you gain so much more damage on plate four and five because of it and snipers are dead that's a big difference compared to doing max damage on plate three and four and then say a sniper catches you and kills you and wipes your run that's not good and it'll put pressure on you to hit your crits while snipers are flinching you all that stuff just makes it a mess if you do it like this it's all organized and, and you can't really fail but that was the solo two phase on it and the solo flawless on the prophecy for a titan hope you enjoy thank you